Hey everybody and welcome to another video from the Electronic Armory. In this video we're going to continue our series with Kotlin development in Android and I'm going to show you how to do some basic debugging in Android Studio. So we're going to use the application that we built in our last video and we're going to debug this a little bit and see how our application changes throughout the execution of our code. Now to do that I'm going to manipulate our variables a little bit more here so I'm going to actually have a new variable here called sum sum and that's going to be a type double and we're going to set that sum equal to let's say 20 point I don't know 5 plus 3.4 and we're going to take that sum and we're going to add it to this value and you can see that we get an error and we can usually fix some of these errors by using this red light bulb here on the side to see what it's going to try to do for us. So convert expression to an int that will convert this expression here to an integer. Let's see what happens when we do that. So it combines it into parentheses to kind of group this together. And then on that object that results from that, which is a double because we're adding an integer and a double, the compiler just says we're going to make that into a double. And then on that object, we can do to int. Likewise, what I can do is if we had another value and I wanted to make this, let's say another double of type double and we have, I wanna make it 10, but 10 is not a double. It, it doesn't have any decimal point after it. Now this can be another, this can be an integer if I wanted to and I can just do two double on that int. So I can do something like sum int dot two double like you see me do previously. Or we can do, if I go back to that, uh, let's put 30 here, I can simply do to double like that. Now that looks a little weird, but it's being very explicit about what I'm, what I'm trying to do here. So there's a number of ways to do that, and that's essentially what this is doing. It's converting it into an actual number, which is an object, and it's calling to int to cast that to another int here. And what we're going to simply do is copy this debug here and print out the new value of sum in. Now debugging is a lot more powerful than just logging out the values as our ap application executes. And this is because what happens is this gets executed within a blink of an eye, if not faster, and we don't really understand what's going on. We have to go through and, and see how our, our log statements look. And this can be kind of tedious and you might have to run the application again, etc. So to put a breakpoint or stop the code execution on a particular line, let's say this first line here on line 13, I can click in this gutter, and once I do that, click until you see a red dot here. And I'm going to put another one here at 23, and I have to put it on a line. If I put, put it on 25, which doesn't have a line of code on it, it won't let me do that. I have to put it on an actual line of code. Okay, so once I put these breakpoints in here, I need to debug the application. And what'll happen is the application will continue as normal until it reaches this line of code. Once it reaches that line of code, it'll stop execution of the application. And so I can inspect these different values of the application. So give that a try. Now, normally you'd hit that play button to run our application in the emulator. What you need to do, and if our application is running, I'm going to stop it and there's another play button here in the top right hand corner that has a little bug in the back, kind of looks like a beetle, with a play button. And that's going to run our application under debug mode. If I hit the play button, these breakpoints get ignored. So make sure that if it doesn't work and the, your application is not stopping on those breakpoints, make sure that you didn't hit that play button. And sometimes I'll stop it first just to double check. So hit the debug button here and it'll ask me which device I want to deploy to. Let's do our emulator. I'm going to switch over to that really quickly. So it's waiting for the debugger. And there it is. So it stops on line 13, and you can see that line is now highlighted. And it also brings up our Android debug menu here. So on the left-hand side is our stack trace. You can see who called this function. And right now it's just Android stuff, so it doesn't make any sense. We'll go into this in future videos. But just as an overview, it stopped on this line of code. You can see your variables that are in scope. This refers to the class, so if I expand that, you can see all the class variables, which is more than we could ever want to look at. And then you have your local variables as defined. In this case, we have saved instance states, which comes in as a parameter to this function. And we don't have summint yet because this line has not technically executed yet. 
So to execute or step over that line of code, we go down here to our controls. So this is going to be a step over. This is going to be step into, and that will bring us into functions that we haven't talked about yet. And this is for step into, and there's various reasons for that. And if we're inside of a function, we can step out of that function. So most of the time, I just do step over. And once I hit that, it'll go on to the next line of code. And Android Studio conveniently puts out some in 10 here, but I can also inspect that down here as well. If I, um, if I right click on that, what I can do is I can actually set that value from 10 to let's say 12, even after the fact that it's been set by my compiler. So if for some reason you need to debug a certain value and it's just not coming in or, or whatever, you can explicitly set that value. So that's a pretty cool feature. So I'm going to step over our sum double, and you'll see that our variable list here gets populated with the new values. Some float will come in. Some string will get added. And you can see now this has a little bit different syntax. Instead of a black, it's green. And we can look at our string and see some other values of our, our string object there. All right, so here's, here's kind of a, an interesting view. So we have sum int plus sum double. And that's going to give us the value here. So summint is 12, which again, you remember I changed it from 10 to 12 by right clicking on this variable and going to set value where you could hit F2. And then sum double, which was set explicitly up here. And it's going to then add that to sum. So I don't know what sum is going to be yet, but if I step over the line of code, you can now see that sum is 22.5, etc., And then all the values of sum int, sum double there. And I'm going to step over this line of code. This line of code is actually not really a line of code. It's just a declaration. Technically, it allocates memory, etc. All right, we're going to jump over this line of code here, and we're going to print this out. Now, this got set to 10. And all right, and again, to check the value of that log message, I can go back to our log cat output and see that the last line here is the value of another int is 10. And again, that's not the same as sum int, that's another int, so that value is 10. And then we're gonna go back to our debug menu here and continue execution. Now, I forgot to mention, I kinda stepped over these. Let's say I want I don't wanna hit the step over button a whole bunch of times to get to line 32. So I can introduce a new breakpoint there, I can turn this off here. And what I can do is hit the play button or the continue or resume program and that'll automatically step over those lines of code. And there you go. Not to be confused with this button, sometimes I'll, I'll accidentally hit that button. What that does is that goes to the line that's being executed. If you hover your mouse over, it says show execution point. So if I hit that, that'll go back to the file and where the line of code. So if I'm investigating some code elsewhere, I could always jump back to where the application has stopped. And then because I hit that play button, it skipped over all those lines of code and I can continue resuming the application and running that. Okay, so here's our application that we have running. So debugging is probably the most important tool that you can use because rarely, if ever, does everything go correctly the first time. So to build up your debugging skills is going to be something that's going to be really valuable for you. It's gonna save you a whole lot of time in your journey to Kotlin Android development as well as your development careers in general but I highly, highly recommend you spend some time playing around with the debugger, stepping through code, changing the values as the application is running. So spend some time with this, become familiar with it, and when something goes wrong, you'll know how to go in there, dive down deep, look at your variables, and you might realize that what you thought was being set or how you thought something was working was not how it was working. So we'll go through debugging again in future videos a little bit more in depth, but I just wanted to introduce you to this early because again, you're probably gonna have some issues with things not working and we can figure those out really quickly with the debugger. So our application at this point doesn't do anything very exciting yet, but in the next video, we'll show you how to add UI elements to the screen, start manipulating them, and have it do something valuable and interesting. So make sure you're subscribed to this channel to get the latest updates on Kotlin development, as well as other videos that I put out on this channel, such as iOS development, 3D modeling, and game development. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.